Right, so this time we are going to get started with our automated binding. And last time we integrated that RTTR library, which I've got here. There you go, that's the methods tutorial. That's what we're gonna do this time. So this RTTR.org. So we integrated that last time. Um, I've just set up a really simple Lua thing. I've got our memory allocator that we've already written, created state. There's a Lua script, which I've just embedded right into this file. Um, execute that script and close. So that's just our basic setup for the Lua stuff that we already know how to do. Um, and I've also set up another file here, which is another CPP file that uh, we're going to put all our stuff in that we're going to just like um, automate the embedding of. So to start with, I'm just going to put in a, um, a couple of just free functions uh, that have no parameters and no return types. We're going to see if we can like automate the binding of those into Lua. Um, what, what Ideally, what we want to get at the end is what I really want is a, a table. I'm just going to call it global. Uh, and I want to be able to call hello world on it. So that's the outcome of this. I want to be able to call that native function from Lua. And I'm going to do that with the automated bindings that we put in last time. So uh, to start with, I'm just going to put, uh, well, I'm going to include our, uh, our library that we've that we've added. The it's RTTR registration we need to call include according to the docs, which are here. There it is RTR registration, and then we kind of use this macro to um, basically register our native stuff, our rated native types. So that's just like a macro, and what all it does is it, it creates a method that gets called before main gets called. So the idea is you register all your types before the main program starts. So we just want a couple of uh, functions that uh, we want to be able to like uh, create native uh, runtime type information for. So we're just going to do the classic hello world. And uh, there we go. Can't type today. And I'll just create another one as well, just for good measure. Uh, and then to register them, it was RTTR registration method. So that's how we registered. Like, so I'm just registering three functions, uh, and I'm just going to do ones with no parameters or anything, just to just to get the simplest thing we can get going. Uh, so what we do is we we have to give it a name. So I'm going to call it hello world, and then we give it the point to the function. So the function is called hello world. So that's basically creating runtime type information uh, for our native method. And there's the second one, I'll call that hello world too. So the important part here is that one of the things I've done is I've moved this stuff out into a separate CPP file, these, these stuff that we're gonna test the bindings of, because I'm just proving a point that um, there's no header file for this and the header file is not being included in our Lua bindings. So we're gonna be able to bind this uh, without actually knowing, like having like pointers to these functions or anything. And that, that's the important part is that we've somehow mapped this hello world string to this to this pointer to this function. And there's, there's going to be a like a very, very weak reference across in this binding so that we can call it here. But we, we really didn't need to include any of those any of those files at all. So that's that's the outcome we want. And we probably want our hello world too as well. So we want to be able to get this script to work. And currently, of course, well, we can test that we've our registration worked. Yeah, so attempt to call index nil and value global. So let's start by uh, let's start by after we've created our state, we want to create uh, a table, just a table that we can put our uh, stuff into and we need to set a global called uh, I called it global didn't I uh, set global uh, so that just takes the thing on the stack which is the table we've created and sets a global called global I think it actually pops the table off the stack and we actually need that again so I'm just going to push the table back onto the stack and I do that like this so that just takes the thing at the top of the stack, minus one, which is there, and just pushes it back onto the stack. So this will set as a global, uh, and it will be that table. 
and it will pop that table and it'll just leave us our original table back on the stack. So that's what we want to do. Uh, I think now I'll push the table on again. So that's the same thing again. We're just pushing on our table again. And um, do I even need to do that? I'll, I'll push it on again anyway. Um, then I need to go through all the methods that we've registered with, with the runtime type information. Well, this is what I want to do anyway. I'm going to go through every single free function that we registered and I'm going to bind that uh, somehow into this table. Uh, so to do that, uh, I can actually I can actually go through all those methods that we registered. Uh, so I get those like this, I believe, according to the docs. RTTR type. I think it's oh I haven't I haven't put the include in. Let's put our include in. That is the one thing we have to include. We because we, that's our that's kind of our link between the two is it's the runtime type information uh, in this RTTR library that is going to link uh, that's going to bind our our C plus plus to the um, Lua code. So we're going to go through each of the methods that we registered. Get, I think there's a get global methods. There we go. So that just so that's just going to go around every single method. Uh, and what we want to do is for each method, we want to get the name of it, that name that we registered, and we want to put that uh, as a, a field in the table. So I'll just push a string for that. Lua. Uh, and to get the, t uh, the name of the table, of oh, sorry, the function, uh, it's method get name, is it? Get name. And then that gives me, I think that gives me a, yeah, a string view which I can turn into a string, which I can get the pointer to the string. That may not be the most efficient way to do it, but I believe that will work. And I'm assuming that this C string that we're getting, that we're gonna uh, push onto the stack is not gonna be deleted or at any point. I'm assuming this method is gonna, you know, not be deleted by um, the runtime type information. It's just completely static at this, at this point anyway. Um, so that's the name of our method. We're going to push that on and we're going to, we need a C, like a Lua compatible function uh, to call uh, when this, when this is invoked. So I'll just push, I'll just push C closure. And that takes our Lua state and we want a um, call global from Lua. And this value is the number of up values that it has. I'll say zero for now. So that will be the function that gets invoked uh, when something with this name is called on this table. And I have to just set that on the table. So it's uh, minus one is the closure. That's the name. And there's the table. So it's minus one, minus two, minus three. So that's just basically. So what we're doing is. Uh, one, that's our table, and that's the, that's the table called global. Uh, two is the name of the method. And at three is the function, the C function that we want to call. And then this just does one, or the equivalent of one, two, whoops, equals three. Can't type properly at all. So that's pretty good. So that's that's basically binding the name that are like it's binding our function with the name into that table. So it's it's almost what we want. We haven't written this function yet though. So let's just write the implementation that Lua wants us to make for that. So it wants Lua state. Uh, and remember it turns the number of things you're leaving on the stack, which I'll just say none for now. Um, so that's so that's basically it. That's that's like that's binding our function called call global from Lua for for call global from Lua for each one of these method names that we've bound with the runtime type information. But of course, at the moment, the, the function is pretty useless because it doesn't do anything. Let's just put a printf in there, and let's just see if we can get it to print those. Let's just see that it's getting called. Because we've added our hello world one and hello world two, so we, so we should be looping around hello world one and two and 
and, and adding them to this global table with a call to that function. So we should see two lines of XXXs. And there you go, that's what we get. So that's all pretty good. We've bound that function. Uh, but really what we need to do in here is we need to invoke it. And to do that, we're going to need access to the, the method that we bound in the runtime type information, which um, we don't actually have. So what I want to do is I want to push on an up value for this method that we can use to send the method to that to that function. Remember, an up value is just a piece of global information that's associated with the C function that gets called. Uh, and I can have, even though there's only one, I'm going to, going to register one method called call global from Lua, I, each one can have a different up value. So uh, for each one, I'm going to push a light user data, which remember is just a C pointer to, to the method. So there we go. And that's to be cast to avoid star because that's what Lua wants. Um, and this doesn't change this because when, when I do push C closure with one up value, it pops the up value from the stack of this one up value. So this doesn't change. Uh, this is still the one, two, three assignment that we've got there. So we've now got um, the correct method being assigned as an up value to each one of these calls to Lua. So we should be able to retrieve that in our function up here. Uh, we should be able to do Lua to user data. I believe, and we have to get the from the up value. We have to do up value index, and it's the first up value. So that should give us our method. Whoops, not metadata. Should give us our pointer to our method back, which we have to cast because it's just come back as a void star. So that's retrieving. So now we we we're inside the function, and now we've got back the information about the method, or at least the, the type information about the method that we wanted to call. So I'll just cast that to, or I'll just turn that into a, a reference. Uh, met, so this is our method to invoke, which came from our up value. I'll just dereference that. You should really do some check here, but I mean, we're going on the assumption that our method's always valid. So that up value, it's the same function getting called every time, but the up value is changing. And to, according to the documentation, uh, I think we just do invoke, do we? Uh, they've got type invoke there, but I think you can do method invoke. Uh, let's just try it. Method invoke, there we go. And this is where you need to check the documentation, but it, it wants an instance object. So this is designed to work with C++ as well, where in C++ you might have a, a an object that's an instance of something which then has a, uh, a function on it. But in our case, it's a free function, so it doesn't have an instance. So in that case, the documentation says just to pass um, this empty value in this instance. So we're still leaving nothing on the stack. So that should be it. Each time this gets called, um, each time hello world gets called, it's the same function being called in C, but, but we, we're getting the type information about our method and then we're just invoking it. So hopefully that replaces our X's now with, there it is, hello world and hello world two are being successfully uh, called from Lua. So that's the beginnings of uh, getting our runtime type information to, um, to map like just this really trivial example of just free functions with no parameters into Lua. So the, the important part to, to realize here is that, let me just take, I'll take this Lua script part out up here just to, to to keep it away from the rest of it. But we have to imagine that this got loaded from a file and this wasn't actually in the source code anywhere. If you look down here, this binding now uh, is generic, completely generic to all the, all the global functions with no parameters and no return types that can be invoked. I don't have to change this again now to, to invoke another function. So to prove the point, I now all have, if I added a new function now, if I add hello world three, all I've got to do is register it with the runtime type information and it is going to be bound to Lua and it can be, so now this can be called by Lua without changing any of the Lua binding code at all. So all I'd have to do to call it is change the script. So if this was loaded from a file, I'd just open up my Lua script and I'd call hello world three 
Did I actually put three on the end? I did. And wait for it. Let's see if put my money where my mouth is. So there's Hello World One, Hello World, Hello World Two, and Hello World Three. So we, it's it's not great, um, but it proves a point that that you know that in this instance I haven't passed any parameters or done anything fancy, and that's where all the hard work's going to be. But it's showing that already, even with a very small amount of runtime type information, I can I can at least bind this very simple function. Um, and now I can edit this CPF file that knows nothing about Lua at all, and suddenly Lua can call this function. So that's really good. So um, uh, that's the beginning of what we want to work on. So next time, we'll push this on a bit further, and we'll try and call some uh, methods with with parameters, and we'll pass these parameters with right value. And we'll probably see at that point that it's slightly more tricky than maybe you thought. But once you've got the binding written. Uh, it's pretty. It's it's going to be like much much easier to bind stuff to Lua. So I uh, hope you like that one, and I'll catch you next time.